Morning, everyone. Welcome to the morning brief. Uh, today is a Friday, July 10th. This is our OTOT masterclass on investing with military precision. Uh, updates on the podcast things are going well, up to 681 total downloads. So we are getting there slowly but surely. And episode 26 went out last night. So uh, check it out if you. Uh, have a chance. As far as our mission objectives today, we're going to grow our money, we're going to protect our money and live off our money. Our particular topic today is more focused on growing our money out there, and we're going to use the FANG acronym uh, that Jim Cramer, who's also our topic of the day, uh, came up with, I want to say, four years ago. Maybe it wasn't that long, but it's certainly been uh, something he coined during his show, Mad Money, and then it basically uh, took off. Uh, from there and still talked about today. Of course, yesterday we talked about smart stocks. Uh, today it will be the FANG stocks. All right, as far as our flow, we'll talk about long investing stuff, short stuff around the open, and then we'll stay short until about 10 minutes after, and we'll take a look about what's going on in the long investment world. Uh, but before we do that, we'll do a market review around the world, take a look at today's headlines, and then those are the FANG names that we are going to take a look at uh, there. Uh, we'll do some day trading opportunities and execution and then take your Q&A. Again, if you have any issues, go to TechSport, Steve at OTOTnow.com. And our standard disclaimer, this is an educational show, so you have to do your own due diligence before you act on anything you hear me say this morning. All right, let's go up to TD Ameritrade and we will go around, excuse me, uh, we will review uh, how we've been for the past year so you know about the big run up and then the drop off. And we are still, even with yesterday's move down in the Dow, uh, still hanging out in that channel. Um, we shall see uh, after today. Today started a little bit heavy into the red, um, but um, could go either way on, on a Friday like today. So let's go to the next screen. All right, here's kind of a close up. So after that big five or six day move up, now we're getting that kind of leak back down. It's not something I worry about. Uh, that could happen anyway, especially after you have six days up. Uh, but the market's going to kind of find itself here. And you do see that the, the futures were down a lot more. And there's those three, those were 15 minute stripes uh, that you're looking at there on the right side. So pretty big move up here right before the open. So that's a, a good healthy signal going into the, the day. All right. As far as the earnings calendar, I did not look to see what was out there yet this morning. Uh, but there was not a lot of anybody gapping down on earnings for sure. So don't recognize any of those names. But we'll keep an eye out for that in the headlines. All right, we'll take a look down at the futures. Futures are uh, all within a quarter percent of, of being even there. So slightly in the red. Uh, all right. Uh, so some positive news out of uh, Gilead and Rimsvir uh, that I still don't know how to say. Um, should have a positive effect there. So we'll see. Uh, Gilead's been all over the place as far as the stock being up and down. All right, let's scroll up a little bit. I'm sorry, let's go around the world. Uh, Europe was all in the green earlier and still is. So pretty significant move there. While you look at Asia is all in the red um, and with China down pretty big. Now they've been on a tear, so that, would, that doesn't bother me a whole lot uh, that they're selling off. But uh, in the red across the board, look at our numbers from yesterday. Uh, Dick's up around 29. You see a split market, which you don't see a whole lot, but again, tech is really carrying the day here in NASDAQ, and then the rest of the market's starting to get left behind a little bit. Okay, as far as bonds, not a whole lot of movement there. Check out oil, drop below 40. So you see it down there at 39.41, and then over in the precious metals, everything was in the green uh, earlier, and indeed, Pretty much this case, except for uh, palladium there. All right, we'll go back to the headline review. All right, United reached an agreement. I'm looking at the banner now. The United reached an agreement um, uh, to furlough with the pilots union and such. So uh, hopefully they'll be on a, a healthier path now that more is known about what they're going to do. Uh, Amazon got another street high upgrade. That was a name we're going to talk about today. And Wells Fargo made an interesting move. Um, they raised their cap on some loans that they're making. So basically tightening the standards out there. So is that, what does that mean? Well, 
that means it's going to be harder to get a loan. But again, then again, the entire mortgage industry of which Wells Fargo is the largest uh, mortgage lender, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to do that. But the demand has been so much that they can afford to do that. So, so that's what's going on with Wells Fargo. I don't think it'll help the stock. The stock's still been left behind from all the negativity that they had. All right, we talked about Remdesivir um, possibly being uh, helpful. We'll see. New record spike. Seems like that's a new, it's a headline every day, up to 63,000 new cases. All right, we talked about the United um, Agreement there. Biden, interesting that the Democrats would go with this. Uh, I don't know if they wrote it or if he wrote it, but when you talk about the investor class and that how the investor class doesn't need him, uh, it's interesting uh, with millennials and picking up with you know apps like Robinhood and Acorns and things like that are a lot more involved as an age group than any other age group has been in individual stocks. So. Uh, the and when you it's either 52 or 53 percent of americans own individual stocks at some point so to kind of take a stab here at the investor class thinking that uh your average person out there doesn't have exposure to the stock market i think it's pretty short-sighted on his part so i would expect that uh you know you won't get elected if you keep saying investors don't need you but who knows we shall see how it all plays out all right, let's go ahead and scroll up. New MacBook Pro out. I haven't checked that out yet, so I'll have to check that out later today. Um, iOS 14, though, is on the street. Uh, if you simply Google it, you can get the beta version. I got it on my phone. I cannot tell uh, there's some subtle differences, but nothing uh, game-changing, if you will, um, on iOS 14. But you can get it now if you want, or you can wait till it gets fully released. Okay, Netflix is another name we'll talk about, another uh, street high target uh, for that stock out there. Netflix sitting over 500 now, so pretty, uh, pretty move, pretty big move. We can just go down to the bottom here. So TikTok, obviously we've talked about that a couple times this week. The, uh, something is going on because as far as I'm not in the app, but my kids are and they said all of the likes and follows and all that stuff is, has disappeared, which obviously a lot of that is what drives its popularity is some of that uh, millennial need to be uh, comforted or whatever you would say uh, by knowing that people like and love them. But um, so we'll see what's going on with TikTok. Interesting to follow that story. All right, Nevada, back reopened for bars. Um, I don't see the Disney headline yet. Maybe we'll get to it, but not related to Nevada, of course, but thinking Vegas. Um, and in other hot spots, the other one uh, is Disney opens tomorrow in Disney World. Disneyland is not open. Disney World is. Um, so we shall see. Hopefully that'll help uh, Disney stock out some because it has not been doing well lately. Okay, and keep going. Uh, Tesla, yeah, it looks like uh, the, the whispers are in for as far as all of the earnings uh, stuff. They're obviously, in, you go into a black eye period before earnings, so it's not Tesla saying it. The people that study Tesla are saying that they will beat earnings. Uh, which obviously means they'll be included in the S&P 500, which we've talked about. All right. You can scroll on up. Uh, that bottom one there, that's the last one we'll talk about is Alibaba. I do have that on the, uh, the big screen uh, for today. Obviously, it has run up to an all-time high lately, and there's lots of... Um, I mean, Neo was up again this morning. It was at you know three dollars three weeks ago. Now it's up close to fifteen today. So there are some Chinese stocks that have come back into popularity, and I would agree that now's not the time to buy into these things uh, unless you already have them. Okay, let's go over to Schwab, and we will talk about the Fang stocks. So again, Jim Cramer came out with the Fang acronym several years ago. 
and it has morphed over time. The original Fang was Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google. So then it had picked up another A when Amazon was, uh, we kind of realized that, okay, Amazon really belongs in this class. And then it expanded later with another A, which was Alibaba. So even though it's a uh, ticker starts with B, uh, down there at the uh, the bottom right, that was kind of included as far as okay names that can continue to grow, basically forever. So well, well, you see all of them are on an upswing. Almost all are at a new time high, except for uh, Google. But we'll talk about them individually, and the thesis that goes with them. Um, Facebook, obviously, it's advertising dollars that are, is the big financial catalyst that's uh, bringing things up. However, you see the dip there, what's that, seven or eight days ago, that was the beginning of the boycott. So there are a lot of negative headlines that come out with Facebook um, that tend to, tend to move it a little more than, the, than most. I do believe it is the only real source for advertising dollars though, from a small business perspective, because it's just too easy. You click on your Facebook site and you are off to the races in a matter of minutes and you can get in for $50 or $5 versus going through an ad agency, it's gonna be up in the thousands. So um, just for that access alone uh, to your advertising market is pretty impressive. Um, I don't think they'll ever charge for Facebook, but if they did, I think a lot of, they, they'd be able to pull in a, a you know, subscription like Netflix um, of teens and per month or something like that. A lot of people would leave, but they would have enough that stay that they could monetize it if they ever wanted to, but I don't think they will. I think Zuckerberg is uh, dead set against that. Okay, over to Apple. You know my opinion, best of breed luxury stock with a moat, um, high tech, high margin uh, products out there that are highly addictive. So it's kind of meets all of the needs um, out there for the, the perfect stock. Um, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, obviously said 43% of his book is Apple stock. And uh, it's been the number one stock in my personal life as well as the book for a long time. So, and I don't say that changing anytime soon. Uh, it does go, Apple does go through a cycle. So right before it's released, generally they release their new products around a September timeframe. So if there's ever an entry to get into Apple, so it sells off generally into September and then it uh, gets hyped up around the, when the new products actually come out. Uh, so they have the initial release and everybody picks them apart and then the people start buying them and they see that these lines are around the corner at, uh, at Apple stores. And then of course, going into Christmas where then it'll be a hot seller, the iPhone 12, you know, it will be, I'm going to get the 12 here this year. Um, I don't care what it looks like. I know it's going to be newer and better than the one I have. So I get it. Um, so, uh, Apple's still pretty much the best of the uh, bunch out there. As far as Amazon, this one really took off with the, I was not in Amazon because it was too expensive for a long time and it was, it was unprofitable for 19 years uh, before they finally turned a profit. Um, I got in once the COVID thing hit and the market started selling off the March 22nd lock and load uh, a presentation I had, which was a day early off of the actual lows, but that's when I started buying Amazon. And obviously it turned out that almost a double uh, from from there, but that's what really changed my mind as far as finally I have an entry point that I'm comfortable with um, back below 2000 into the 1800s um, to where you could actually load up on the stock. And now pretty much everybody should have a share or two of Amazon, in my opinion. All right, Net Netflix is the biggest one. The stock here has been a little bit of a surprise. It, it has gone up, but it had end of new highs, but it didn't go through the roof. And a lot of it's because the competition for uh, content. So Netflix would be the one I'd be more most hesitant about here. I'm not sure it can maintain above $500 just because there's so many competitors out there and the content world has been affected significantly from this as well. So the really hard to put dollars to work here. I have some Netflix still that, you know, is from way back. Um, and this is one of these, if, uh, almost a cult stock. If you watch a lot of Netflix and you want to hold the stock, then that's fine, but that's not the best thesis in the world uh, for holding it. But I have folks say that all the time. All right, so let's look at Google uh, next. Google's one that's kind of been left behind. It looks like it hasn't quite hit the same level as it was in back in mid-February, 
but also with, with Google, you think ad, ad dollars, but now you're talking the search business, which is a little different of trying to manipulate, not manipulate, to try to read the algorithms to get your site up to the front page of their Google search content. So a little bit different than going to Facebook and saying, hey, I wanna send something out to 45 year old, 55 year old people about, uh, I've got this morning brief going and you should check it out. You know, that's Google is more of the how to boost it up for everybody out there and it's expensive. So where you can get in cheap at Facebook, trying to do all the SEO paid subscription stuff for Google is very expensive, uh, but it works. Um, so I like Google here. You could buy it here. I think it's got a lot more to run. I do not see any competitor out for it of note uh, that's out there. So again, another uh, good long-term name to hold. Uh, the last one I'll talk about is Alibaba. Again, the biggest risk here is the Chinese risk, but Alibaba is actually as a company, not just bigger than Amazon, but way bigger uh, because their middle class in China is six times our middle class as far as numbers. So again, the same business model as Amazon is um, pushing a lot of stuff out there and then collecting a little bit from each sale and then it being massive. And you can go to the Alibaba website here in the U.S. and buy stuff too. So it's a pretty, it's got pretty, uh, pretty good reach. It also owns Ant Financial, which is their financial arm that they're going to spin off uh, probably later this year, or early next year. Um, so again, that that's a money maker for them as well. So it's run up here. I would not buy it here, but I do love holding on to Alibaba. It's a long term hold, so it's one of those you can just kind of just just throw it in the throw it in your uh, portfolio and basically wait. So to summarize, what you will see up here is when you glance at it is uh, the lack of a dividend. Uh, Apple pays a decent dividend because so it's so widely owned that they kind of had to. Um, and then Google pays a di fractional dividend as well, but the, uh, the rest of them don't. And I don't see that changing uh, anytime soon. Uh, Facebook's been kind of under pressure to release a dividend, but I don't think that they will. Okay, that's it for the FANG stocks. Uh, see a comment in here. Oh, thank you uh, for, the, for the compliment there, Jump jumper um let's see um predator facebook should charge 2.99 yeah maybe i don't know that's a that's an easy number i like the one reason why i said i won't i would not get rid of it is because of the i treat it like a electronic scrapbook because i you know kids were very young and i you know, i saw i see volleyball pictures almost every day of my little girls playing from five or eight years ago so I think the iPhone 12 will have 5G capability. I'm pretty sure it will. Oh, uh, that's pretty funny. 1998 for your first order on Amazon. That is, that's pretty amazing. I'll have to check that out later. That's kind of funny. All right, let's go over and look at the tabs for some short ideas. I was trying to surf. So I was like, this is a perfect day for shorts, right? Because everything's in the bloody red and I could not find anything that was really worth shorting, so we'll take a look at it. Uh, just as we, while we were talking about the FANG stocks, though, the entire market flipped over to the green. So uh, everything's between 0.05% and 0.10% to the upside. So positive news or a positive uh, atmosphere going into uh, today's uh, opening session here in 12 minutes. So, all right, let's look at some names in play. Neo, I had mentioned earlier, and I, I said it was up at 15. Shame on me. It's, it's almost 16 now. Uh, it's been a crazy, crazy stock to watch. But I would not touch it. I don't think it can continue this as far as our gapping strategy. Um, if anything, this is going to sell off hard with, with some, some little bit of news, and this thing's going to come in hard. Just looking at a headline. Um, a company called Rivian. Uh, see if you can Google a ticker off of uh, Rivian. Um, there's a headline on CNBC. Rivian says it's going to take out both Tesla and and um, Nikola. Nikola, um, as far as in the EV market. Um, so we're get, we'll check that out as far as looking for a ticker. Okay, it looks like it's pre-IPO right now, so you can't get in on it uh, is what we're seeing here. 
Uh, so never mind on Rivian, they're just talking a big game. But they probably watched the CEO of Nikola talk a big game without actually producing much of anything, and their stock has been on fire. And then it sold off hard, and then it went up like 20, it went 30% this week earlier. I mean, it's been kind of crazy. Um, but we shall see. Back to our board. Uh, SPAC is a one of those special little Spartan acquisition companies. I don't know what they're going to do, some closet IPO in there. Um, I do not know what it is. So I wouldn't touch it, but I know it's in play. All right, airlines selling off a little bit. Nothing I find really attractive off of that page. We'll go to the next tab. Well, nothing in our five to eight percent level. There's Netflix at new highs. I would not take that long here. Nvidia, Amazon are good long-term holds. I don't see that they don't have uh, our numbers as far as meeting that. All right, let's take a look at the decliner. See if we can find something. Low volume, beyond meets in there, not much of a gap. Let's click on that, see if that's a, a headline. That stock has run up so much that that might be a short opportunity. Uh, let's see. Closed at 141, down at 137 now. Don't see the beyond headline necessarily. Starts with sell. Okay, there, thank you. Looking right at it and not seeing it. So it looks like they got a sell tag from City. Um, so that's going to affect a little bit. So beyond would be a short again, it hasn't really dropped that much. And it's also almost a cult stock um, from, from this as well. Uh, click on the gapping down. To see what other names we can pull out of this. WDFC, we'll see if that has any volume. Let's check that out. WD40, okay. No volume. And uh, pull up CNTG. Don't know what that is. Centigene, okay, I've heard of them. Primary and secondary stock offering, that's obviously, uh, they're taking a big hit. Look at that slope down, right? Uh, plenty of volume, so that, that has continuation possibilities. CNTG on a stock issue, um, that would be a short. That's something we can take a look at. And then click on the pre-market gappers. UAL's down at 3.8% and for United Airlines. Now pull up UAL, we'll take a look at that. Closed at 30.17, down in 29s. That's kind of a hard sell off. We'll put that on our short watch. You know, I think CNTG is probably the best out of all of them right now. Okay. Uh, what's B and D? Oh, it's bond. 5% for a bond fund sell off. Somebody must be dumping it. No, oh, it's low volume. Interesting. Okay, we'll go to the next tab. All right, stuff to the upside. The Dow went back in the red. Basically, it's completely flat uh, within um, a fraction of even for everything. So, yeah, we'll check out Every Holdings. I haven't heard of them. I do like low low price entry stocks, so and trading right around five. Sometimes you do get the uh, the, the swing of mutual fund companies will buy them. I generally think they wait though until it's above, stabilized above five before they move in so they don't have to move back out. We'll put that on our watch list for long. Don't see a story that goes with it. 
Uh, check out Cloudflare. I don't know what they do. An investor's belief. Look at that. All right, closed at 39.70, up at 42 now. Plenty of volume. We'll put that on a long watch list. Trying to see if I can find a headline out of all that. You can scroll up just to touch, to see if it mentions net in there somewhere. Keep going. I think it's alphabetical, so we're at C. That's gonna be too much to sort through. There's a ton of stuff in there. Okay, all right, let's see what else we can find off of this that meets our, nothing for volume, really. Uh, no, no. All right, let's check out the last tab. Do not know what Wafu is, but let's pull that up. Wafu. We're going to check that out on another screen. Education group. I thought there was a description there at the bottom. Uh, I don't have anything off of uh, what that says. Hmm. All right, I uh, won't touch that one then. Yeah, Netflix, Gilead, we could watch Gilead long. Pull up their chart and see kind of where it's been. There you go. Uh, Apex just stabbed it up, Gilead Long, based off the headline, sure. That makes sense, opening to 44 up to, up to 74, up to 76 on the gap up, so that's kind of nice. Uh, only 2% doesn't quite fit our scenario, but we do have a nice big juicy headline and pretty much kind of not much on the move for a Friday. Is this a three-day weekend? Did I miss it? Um, Check out Tilray, see if there's a, a headline associated with Tilray. And nothing on Tilray. All right, well, let's go over and set up our big board. We've got uh, the Predator in there with Gilead Long. I'm looking at CNTG, so set that up there somewhere, please. Uh, and then we have net long, see if you can put that in there. All right, net long in at two out of 15 with a dollar stop. All right, that appears to be on fire. I, I like that. Gilead, 40 cent stop, 76. Yeah, well, oh, man. That sucks as far as uh, picking a stop there with how much it's moving. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I don't have a better answer than 40. So, and you're right, nothing that exciting. All right, CNTG taking it short. So picking out a stop here, backing up to 14, 20 or so. I will use a 25 cent stop. That means it only has to move 75 cents. So I'll type it in real quick. And 30 seconds to the open. CNTG short point or point two five stop. And I'll take it open open to 10 minutes. All right, got that in just in time. So there are the three trades we'll take a look at and still have about 15 seconds into the bell. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Checking the market, we'll just refresh real quick, but it looks like it's just barely in the green. So I don't know, I would have to think that the big move up pre-market would tend more towards an up market today. 
nothing exciting going on this weekend as far as big political events or anything. So I don't know. It's been melting up today. All right, I'm in at the open, so we can start drawing on mine. You guys are in at two minutes, so we'll take a look at that. And CNTG, I've got a 25 cent stop, so that takes us up to 1396. Uh, All right, and again, I am a short. And you guys are both long. Not a lot of movement out of CNTG. Normally you see things flop around quite a bit there in that in that first minute. It's big volume, but it's really not moving a whole lot. That's okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Net's taken off a little bit, 50 cents already. Market's got a nice big green stripe over there, so that's a good sign. It's not gonna help my short though. All right. Gilead's setting up okay for a long move. Be kind of tough with net to get that two minute entry. So if you weren't in it in real world, it, if you weren't in it now, I would not take net higher here, but I would, I would be okay with the Gilead trade. All right, 10 seconds till you guys open up. There we go, 42.43 in net. So the stop on net is a dollar, so 41.43, so plenty of, plenty of room there on that one. And then 76.71 for Gilead and the, what did we pick, 40 cent stop. So that's what, 75.70. All the way at the bottom of the screen will be the stop. We can just throw one down there pretty close enough. We'll adjust that if we uh, need to. All right, for CNTG, that's pretty nice entry at the two minute point there. Um, we'll see if that continues to, uh, to sell off there. All right, all three trades are open. We'll uh, we use the middle pane to kind of look around a little bit. Uh, we'll come back to my trade. Let's check out Beyond. That was a short I considered taking that, BYND. Oh, look at that. So either at the open or even a two minute entry, it's a decent move, already moved. Uh, even if you're in at two minutes at the 134.50, you've already moved down over a dollar. At that price point, you probably have to have a dollar stop anyway. But that's a nice, uh, nice selling off. We'll come back to that. Uh, UAL, I was looking at short. I don't know. People are liking the headlines. So it went from 29 all the way up to, so a 50 cent move up on uh, UAL. All right, both longs are working for your guys' trade. If you look at the market all the way to the left, though, pretty decent uh, move to the downside there. All right, after UAL, let's take a look at, we were gonna look at EVRI long. Not much volume since the open. What's that, 20,000 maybe shares since the open? So not much of a move there. That's almost a dollar stripe down in net. We'll see if it holds there. That's a pretty pretty powerful uh, selling there. If it holds though, I think you're good to go <laughs> for a long. But good good move on having a nice large stop there. Obviously, anything less than a buck would have been right out. 
Yeah, um, if you look at the left panel, market's selling off pretty uh, pretty decent. We'll, I'll give you the CNBC numbers here in a second. Uh, looks like uh, the NASDAQ is, so it's tech that's selling off. That would explain the move in net. Um, NASDAQ's down almost a half a percent. And uh, Dow Jones and S&P are down less than, less than a quarter percent. Okay, looks like net's busted out there. So we'll bring net down. Got my trade back up in the, uh, in the center. I'm in the red, so nothing good happening there. Wow, look at the stripe down in net. Uh, yeah, that's, that's probably just profit taking. There are probably some pretty big, big players in there taking a stab at that one and then, uh, yeah, selling off hard. Wow. All right, so net is dead. Let's look at uh, Gilead long now in that left pane. Uh, we already got Gilead over here, Never mind. Let's go back to Beyond, um, check that out. Again, that's $5 move down from the open, so definitely a multiple uh, R trade there. All right, well, we're watching some other two trades. Let's go with some crowd favorites. <laughs> LKNCY, how are we doing? All right, so down uh, down four percent from where it closed yesterday. So at three point nine, I don't worry about it too much. When you look at the travel in this stock, I think it's getting a lot of attention from traders. So when you look at the open, four dollars down to to you know three and a half. That's what sixteen percent move down, and it's already retraced you know almost all of that. So uh, kind of in play, kind of crazy. All right, we'll take a look at uh, Blink. Yeah, you bet, Mind Reader. Blink selling off. Total move down uh, about 5% on the day. I don't worry about Blink. I would never short it uh, just because it's too good. All right, let's take a look at Workhorse. Yeah, about even after a move up. Well, it's down 5% from the previous close there. So it looks like the EV names are off. Um, if you can bring up the main screen over here, we'll see what Tesla's doing. Sometimes Tesla drags them or drags them down. Now, barely in the red, less than a percent. All right, let's look at uh, Shell, S H L L. Down 2% on the day. All right. And let's take a look at um, Hertz, HTZ. Okay, still still leaking towards bankruptcy. As you look at the update in the trades, I'm about an R point in um, in CNTG. And let's see, 76.50. You're about one R long in Gilead. So um, looking good on both those trades. All right, let's look at Chesapeake on that left pane, CHK. Whoa, maybe they're stopped. Maybe they're uh, halted for good. We'll do, we're gonna check that on a different screen. Huh, our ticker's gone. So well, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Don't know what happened to Chesapeake. All right, uh, and what's our other one? Uh, yeah, RIP, I get, I get the joke. Um, uh, the movie went AMC. All right, a little bit of life in uh, AMC and then OXY. Last one, we'll look at it from the uh, Oh, it's why I get a little life back in it. Wondering if they've got somebody that's going to buy them. So 16 up to 50 cent move up in OXY. All right. All right. Updating the trades. Uh, one point, uh, let's see, about 7R for me. And let's see, we're almost at the 10 minute point. And 76.50, if you want to draw, 76.50 is the R point for the predator there. All right, I'm out at 10. Let's see. Predator's out at 15, so I'll close out here in a minute after, minute after next. Did that move up in OXY? 
All right. Let's put uh, Luckin back in there. Yeah, the, uh, the if you're watching the S&P off to the uh, left, pretty significant move up there. Taking uh, Dow's in the green, S&P's in the green, and the uh, NASDAQ still uh, 0.4 in the red. And then um, let's put CLA in that left panel. Sorry, LCA. This is the acquisition group. This is the one that's releasing the uh, Houston Rockets owner gambling app. So uh, let's see, move down, gosh, all the way down 1365 and starting to, um, this is more of a long, so you're gonna see this stuff starting to show up in, uh, in your portfolio, because I'm gonna be a buyer of this. If it stays certainly in the 13s, I'm going to scoop up quite a bit. If it goes up in the 14s, then I'll just do a slight, slight nibble. All right, waiting for my trade to close out here. And right now, it closed out. So thirteen. So that is a 13.5780 cent move on a 25 cent stop. So. 0.82, hey, all right, point I'm getting the thumbs up, 0.82R on my trade. Um, we'll see if that holds. Gilly, I just had that weird move down over a, eh, over 50 cents. So just retrace it back to where you bought it. So you got another five minutes left on that. Okay, let's go, uh, we're gonna leave this chart. We'll go over to the main screen, see how things are doing. Okay, nothing up huge in the green, just kind of, uh, You'd think this was a Friday before the uh, three-day weekend with stuff not moving, but it's not. <coughs> so again, Neo in play, long, crazy Netflix we talked about. LC and B is getting a little bit of love. That's been selling off. It's nice to see that. Sony's been on the move up. Again, uh, PlayStation 5 coming out. Probably be on fire for Christmas, so... We'll look and see where Sony is. I may add some Sony due to uh, going into the Christmas season, hold that for six months or so. I've already got some, may look at adding some. Bank of America in the green, that's a name I've been kind of slowly selling off. Um, made a little bit of money on the jump off of them handling the uh, triple P loans, um, but pretty much leaving them. And then uh, JP Morgan's your best of breed there. All right, still not a lot of action. Let's check the red side, see if anything's selling off hard. Hey, okay, Luckin selling off hard, who knew? Uh, Nicola, we didn't pull that up. That would've been another team to look at, also selling off hard. So Workhorse, yeah, all the, uh, the big EV names are just a little bit of profit taking there. I would not be worried. Trade desks, FireEye. Baba's in that category of selling off. So again, tech names up top. So as we look at the market, tech still in the red, the Dow and the S&P are in the green. So kind of opposite of yesterday. All right, let's check back to the trades. See how Gilead's doing. Okay, we can watch that. I'm gonna start talking about uh, Jim Cramer. So uh, we'll, we'll keep the screen on your trade there for you, Predator, to check it out. I'm gonna start talking about uh, uh, um, Kramer. So Kramer is a former hedge fund manager. Uh, he managed money for 19 years, uh, wrote a couple books along the way. There's people argue on how successful he was. I think any hedge fund manager that's still in business after 19 years has probably met the condition of success because of the level of risk that you're taking uh, in a hedge fund. Um, but yeah, he wrote, he has the, he hosts the show Mad Money, which has been on now for over a decade. I don't know the exact number of years. I used to watch it religiously. Uh, now I just catch the headlights, headlines, so uh, I get an alert as to what he talked about. So if it's a name that I'm either looking for an entry point in or something like that, I can you know maybe maybe take a look. Or if he comes out with a hard sell on something that I'm about ready to go buy, <laughs> then I'm like oh, I better go check and see at least what he's saying. Um, there, uh, so he he's wrote, he's written some amazing books out there. 
the uh, Confessions of a Street Addict was one of my favorite where he talks about how you can get consumed uh, by the business. He's been very open about his own life. He's gone through a divorce from his first wife and, uh, you know, a lot of the downsides from basically being a workaholic on, on Wall Street. So pretty insightful to the um, to the business, if you will, or at least the business from the 80s and 90s when he was in it. Uh, now he's more of a media personality. He's on a CNBC every morning. Uh, then he goes off air and then he goes, does his show um, in the evenings. So uh, pretty uh, interesting video. If you've ever seen the They Know Nothing video from uh, when he was talking about the, the Fed going into 2007 through 2009, he made some pretty epic calls uh, during that time, um, throwing spears at the Fed, saying that they are not doing anything that they need to do. and looking back he was right that uh they should have acted a lot earlier now of course taking that forward to covid based off of that experience the fed was way early if not too early into this game but you know we'll rewrite we'll uh, analyze history here once some time has gone by and we exit the covid thing whenever that happens to be so um there's the uh, predators trade closing out there it looks like it's closing out into the red um so i'll take the uh the victory there um, with the uh, CNTG short, which looks like it didn't, it's not really hanging out short that much, but all right, we shall see. So back to Kramer, we'll bring it down to the Investopedia. He does have his Investopedia, own Investopedia page. And we'll see what I missed. I kind of talked about the top part, so let's continue down. Uh, okay, so this is fair, and I get this too. Uh, <laughs> He'll leave the White House. Did Trump fire you? Is that the uh, is that the commentary there? The um, uh, from from Predator. That's kind of funny. The uh, but back to Kramer. It, it says he, you know, he gets a lot of flack for flipping around to bullish to bearish. And I will tell you that what I you know same thing when I'm talking to somebody. What I said on Tuesday may not apply on Thursday. It you know things change very quickly. Obviously, if you're going to sit there and pick apart somebody who recommended something and now is, you know, obviously against it, that's pretty easy to do. That's Monday morning quarterbacking. So I do like to hear his positions. Um, and again, for new, new investors, if you like watching him, he is entertaining and his calls are pretty, pretty insightful. Um, now I've kind of, I've watched him enough in my early years. I kind of know how he thinks. So, uh, so I don't watch him as much anymore. Okay, there's the book down at the bottom, uh, Confessions of a Street Addict. I have a copy. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting read. Goes into some detail. Okay, and the last thing he does on Mad Money is when he takes his time off, so he goes on vacation, he has these shows that are in, um, basically canned that he can run anytime, or if he has an emergency in the family or something, which he's had before, you don't get that nightly thing. Or he'll film just, uh, just the opening and the closing or just the uh, lightning round uh, and the rest of it is kind of canned material where he goes into some basics of portfolio management, which are the terms that, you know, when you're talking to individual stocks all the time, you can't get into the, you know, into the weeds of it all. You do need to back out and do basic portfolio management of with a name like LCA. There's only so much you can only put like 3% of your portfolio into LCA because it's so speculative. So same thing with uh, luck and you need to, you know, pick a, a max position size you want to put into a speculative name. So kind of the basics of money management, which isn't talked about a lot, but those are more important, honestly, than stock picking is the money management piece of it to make sure you're not doing something stupid uh, mathematically. So uh, that's all I've got for today. Quick glance through the chat. All right. Market's pretty quiet. Chat's pretty quiet. So uh, thanks everybody for checking in and I'll try to drum up some business this weekend to get a few more names in here, but thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next week. Bye.